Gabe Pena, would you kick us off for the evening? Welcome, everybody. Happy to see you. Thanks, Kim. Good evening, everybody. It looks like we have about 50 folks uh, on with us. Thanks for joining us. My name is Gabriel Pena. I am the Fayette County Resource Coordinator, aka County Guy 2020. Um, look, I'm just here to ride the coattails of the team that put this together. I showed up last minute wanting to get involved with the good news because I don't have any for myself. I just wanted to, you know, get in here and again, uh, jump on Jeff Heater's good news bandwagon, Kim Maxwell, Eric Pores, Jordan Sassine, Becky Sullivan, and Veronica. They pulled this together. I was a part of it last time as a presenter, and it was great. Um, they wrangled me in probably the same way they wrangled a bunch of y'all in. Um, and afterwards, I was very thankful that I was part of it, and I learned a lot and was able to kind of uh, find some of those projects that I, I thought were important and contact those folks and figure out what I could do to help. So hopefully this is useful for you all. I know a lot of the folks that are on this call uh, go to meetings regularly as a part of your daily life. So we really appreciate you all being a part of this. I uh, can't overstate the importance of connecting, not only to share good news, but to be together in these trying times. So again, thank you for taking the time out of your evening to join us. And I really look forward to hearing about the good news happening in Fayette County. So with that, uh, I'll let y'all take it. Go ahead, Kim. Thank you so much, Gabe. Um, again, my name is Kim Maxwell. I wear a few different hats in Fayette County. I am truly honored to be a part of this community and I'm super psyched about this event this evening. Um, I like to think about the idea of focusing on the bright lights and the good things that are happening in our world to create momentum and energy so that we can make more of those. And this will be our third good news event, I believe. And I know that I left the last two kind of buzzing and lit up for days and I really hope the same for all of you. So thanks again for being here and uh, let's focus on some bright lights in our community. Here's the plan. We're going to have a round of speakers, about 10 speakers. Uh, everyone gets two minutes to speak. Then we're going to have a breakout session, a meet your neighbor breakout. So I, um, I ask you to suspend your disbelief and um, be a little brave, try something new. I think this was actually a favorite part of our last good news meeting and I, I personally was surprised by that. But you'll be randomly assigned to a few different um, quote unquote rooms. So when, when we do that, you'll just be kind of disappear from this group and wind up in another and you'll have a couple of uh, fun questions to talk about, maybe get to know someone that you, that you don't already know. So that'll happen in the middle, It's kind of a fun um, breakout in the middle. And then we'll have a, oh my goodness, we will have a second round of speakers. We'll have a poll, we'll have a wrap up. And then at the very end, you'll have the opportunity to spend a little bit more time with uh, speakers or um, a topic or a group of speakers that you're, that you're interested in. So I encourage you that after this event is all over, um, stick around, grab a beverage out of your fridge and, and hang out 2020 style if you're willing. But just know that that's coming at the very end, just kind of a little cocktail hangout happy hour. All right, speakers, listen up. I hope you're all with us. Super psyched to have you. Um, when it's your turn or shortly before it's your turn to speak, we're either gonna unmute you or, or ask you to unmute yourself. So be watching for that, please. Um, and then I'll start the timer. There is kind of a really ob obnoxious bell sound at the end of the two minutes, so you don't wanna run over. So please respect the two minute timer. Um, remember no political endorsements or business advertisements. And then um, please do use the chat to provide additional details after, after you speak um, and links for your good news. So feel free to put more information in that chat box, okay? Listeners, um, there's some expectations for you as well. Uh, the first one, you've shown up and that's huge, but we ask that you encourage the speakers as best you can with head nods and thumbs up and claps, positive reactions. It's tricky to speak in front of a group of people. And it's even a little bit trickier when you can't hear any feedback at all. So do what you can, like we asked you to keep your video on if you're willing, even if you're in your jammies and, um, and just you know make eye contact and give encouragement as best you can. Um, again, use the chat, enter your questions, your reactions and your comments in that box, any additional information, um, anyone else that you think that we should talk to uh, about participating in good news and, and things like that. So you use your chat box, that's for you. Um, 
If you personally have good news to share and you're not on the roster, you can put that good news in the chat. You can also contact, I would suggest contacting uh, Becky and Jordan at the New River Gorge CVB about being on our hopefully next good news. So we know there's a lot of good news happening in Fayette County. We're capturing just a little piece of it. Okay, you ready? Uh, Jeff Heater is gonna kick us off. He has um, an awesome perspective and provides usually some pretty good comedic relief. So we're happy to start with Jeff. Jeff, are you unmuted and ready? Okay, I'm ready. Yeah. I'm excited. Yeah, I know, me too. Okay, thanks Jeff. This always makes me smile. And uh, I'm just thrilled to work with this great group of people. Um, it's been awesome going back for years, we've been working on this and um, none of us ever imagined that this is where we'd um, end up. Um, kind of like the Bon Jovi song, I don't know if anybody's heard it, um, goes something like, I'm not going to sing it. Uh, don't, do what you, uh, if you can't do what you want, do what you can. And so um, we're doing what we can with Leadership Fayette County um, through the Fayette County Education Fund. You know, of course, we'd much rather be um, having our high school juniors, you know, one third of the way through their programming right now. It's an awesome uh, program, been in, in place for 12, almost 20 years. Um, last year, we started with eighth grade program. We'd much rather be doing that, uh, but we can't. So what we're working on is our outdoor classroom and we put up a tent outside Oak Hill High School as a prototype um, model. And um, so far the feedback has been great. We had teachers um, who did a survey and they said, yeah, we'd be willing to take our kids outside um, just to get them outside and have class out there. So um, as per this year, we got the thing set up and the weather turned sour and now the kids are at home. They can't even be there. So if you're interested um, around the county in having a outdoor classroom at your space, um, I'd love to hear from you. I'll put my information in the comment bar. Um, I just want you to picture the mental health aspect of this is what we're really working on. Um, picture the, any movie you've ever seen where they show kids getting out of school and what it looks like. And when they open those doors, the kids just come flying out. Wow, we're free, yay! And that's what we're trying to provide with that um, outdoor classroom, just a little outdoor space. Um, and I ran out of time. I can't tell you about the 30 acre outdoor classroom, which we have lots of partners to take place in and more later. Ding him, ding him, Kim. Leadership, leadershipfayettecounty.com. For those of you all who are looking to get more involved with Leadership Fayette County. Yeah, thank you, Jeff. Thank you very much. And thanks for letting me also demonstrate the bells at the end there. That worked out pretty well. <laughs> I got your chat, leadershipfayettecounty.com. Well done, Jeff. All right, Levi Moore with Active Southern West Virginia. Let's see, Levi, if you're- Hey, out. Sorry, sorry about that. This is my second Zoom meeting ever, so. Um, so my name is uh, Levi Moore. I am a community captain with um, Active Southern West Virginia. Um, I've been a community captain with the um, organization for probably about uh, five years. Um, and uh, basically what I do is I'm a, a hike and walk facilitator for um, Active. Um, so I, I get the uh, pleasure of um, figuring out where uh, we get to go and hike uh, and or walk and then um, experiencing those with uh, people from all over the county, the state, and a lot of times other states, depending on uh, the time of year. Um, and uh, doing that, I see a lot of uh, people go from basically couch to X, couch to 5K, couch to um, name your distance. Um, but recently, uh, a family friend um, of ours uh, came to us wanting help with uh, being able to uh, walk more. And um, she, growing up, was able to, to wade creeks and rivers, uh, but recently has not been able to do that. Um, and so um, she consulted us, uh, wanted um, advice on how to do that. 
and um, in about five to five and a half months, she has literally gone from uh, being able to only walk from her front door to the couch to doing um, 10.26 miles. Um, and so uh, that's just with regular walking um, and nothing special with uh, equipment or, or anything else. So um, walking and, and regular exercise is just outstanding and can't be overstated. Wow, that's awesome, Levi. Thank you so much for the work that you're doing. That's, that's incredible. Thank you for having me. Mm-hmm. Don't let that beard scare you, y'all. Levi's a local hero. <laughs> he's got his own he's got his own success story that he's not sharing he's being modest but he's absolutely a nrg rda or a, a active southern west virginia success story awesome thanks levi thank you uh, shanna or shana i'm sorry if i'm not saying your name your name right shanna gray that's right shanna you got it welcome shanna thank you Hey guys, thanks for having me. Um, I'm Shanna Gray. I'm the state director of West Virginia CASA Association. So CASA stands for Court Appointed Special Advocates. We have a statewide volunteer base that provides a voice in the courtroom for children in abuse and neglect proceedings. Um, I'm here today, however, to speak to you all about being a non-adoptive foster parent. So over the past several years, my husband and I have helped to transition four children um, to permanent homes. So, and right now we currently have three very strong, intelligent, um, courageous sisters uh, staying with us. Um, but our first placement, I'll tell you about. So, our first experience with foster care, she was this little miss, uh, nine years old when she first came to us. And um, she was actually removed from her biological family on her birthday. She first came to our home, this gal was boiling blonde. Uh, she could clear a countertop with one swoop of her arm. She could reach a pitch higher than any scream imaginable uh, for absolutely no apparent reason whatsoever. Um, she can also light up a room with her smile. She is a natural at sports, excels at school, learned um, to love to ski and raft and hike and explore an adventure um, as an outlet for these emotions. See, Prior to coming to mine and Paul's home, this gal had moved six homes in six months. Um, she was rightfully pissed off, scared, and just scrambling. Um, she only wanted to feel the connection of family that she found with us as her foster home. So she, um, fast forward, she now lives a thriving life in Morgantown uh, with her mom, her dad, a brother, um, WVU's big fans, um, and we're fortunate to be able to keep in contact. So I'm going to leave you all with that feel good moment um, and ask that if you've ever considered or researched or thought about researching into foster care to please give me a shout. I'm happy to chat about it and contact information in the box. Nailed that timer too, huh, Kim? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Let's Such see, Mayor Ingram. Hello, everybody. How are you doing this evening? Great. Welcome. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Oh, my timer started. Okay. Hold on. Uh, I'll, I'll fix that, Mayor Ingram. That's not fair. Here we go. <laughs> well, um, let me start with, with saying, first of all, thank you for inviting us up. And uh, I feel like that the, I'm, I'm on the plateau in a meeting and um, we're all big one happy family here. But I have... Um, <clears throat> actually about uh, 62 bullet points that I could share with you tonight, but I don't think I'm gonna make it through all those. But as you all know, we started out uh, in the Valley with uh, losing West Virginia Tech in 2016. And, and um, boy, that really uh, changed the world down here. So we, we started out and uh, we put all the employees on four days a week and we did the type of things that we had to do. And since that time, we've endured nine different studies. Um, comprehensive studies down here that has taken four years to, comp to do them all. Um, comprehensive plan, you know, that consumes three years. Zoning plans consumes three years. And we've worked on all those things and I could go on and on and on on what we've done here. But to share a few things that, that are upcoming and, and to kind of bring us up to, uh, up to pace, we had a lot of crime and stuff in Montgomery when, when WVU Tech left. And so we hired 17 police officers to clean up the crime. And now we're back down to a modest nine. 
Um, we installed a user fee in Montgomery. Uh, we we uh, got home rule. We put uh, the 1% sales tax in effect. Uh, we had to raise our police municipal fee. But anyway, through all those things, um, we've done a lot of, uh, we've uh, moved into a new city hall. Um, we have uh, replaced street lights in town. We've replaced, uh, we've, we're paving. Uh, we've uh, raised the salaries of city employees. We've negotiated Cavalier Heights Senior Affordable Housing in Montgomery. Um, we have uh, created two of the first ever municipal investment funds with the Greater Canal Valley Foundation, and that's for future governments in Montgomery. Uh, we're putting money into those funds and they will pay the city of Montgomery back uh, perpetually. Um, our rainy day fund is once again fully funded. Uh, we're still negotiating on filling the Benning Library with an aggressive company. We're negotiating to build the old main uh, with the developer. Uh, we have Ranger Scientific Couture and my time's up. Thank you all very much. Yes. <clears throat> Lots of good stuff happening in Montgomery. Thank well, you. Those municipal, you investment funds, those municipal investment funds that they have going with the Greater Canal Valley Foundation, that's the first in the, the history of West Virginia. Those are, that's going to be a huge tool for other municipalities once they follow Montgomery's lead. Awesome. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. I believe it's Natasha Jones that we have with us this evening for yep, that's me. New River Health. Welcome, yep. Natasha. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I am Natasha Jones. I'm the Community Resource Specialist for New River Health. Um, I'm here to talk to you about the Fayette Prevention Coalition. I probably need to talk fast because there's a lot. So um, what that is, is a group of organizations and individuals who work together on issues surrounding the drug epidemic. We currently have seven active subcommittees working on initiatives. The first is the Health Promotion Committee. They're, they work on reducing stigma related to substance use addiction um, disorder, which is addiction. The ICE Collaborative, which the coordinator for that is Katie Johnson, uh, is working on youth substance use prevention activities. Adventure Fayette County, which is where we bust in um, 900 kids last year. Unfortunately, we couldn't do it this year due to COVID um, to get them involved in healthy activities. So they rafted and they biked and they did all of the things outdoors and Veronica can, can attest to that. She's on the committee as well. Um, we have Teen Court, which is an alternative sentencing program for teens to keep them out of trouble, to keep them out of the judicial system. Um, and it's operated by teens as well. Then we have the Tobacco Prevention um, Coalition, and that's working on the prevention of vaping and tobacco products. Then we have an intervention committee that works on individuals who are ex experiencing a substance use disorder and help to, present, uh, to prevent the spread of disease and death. Then we have a recovery committee and it is tasked with helping Fayette County become more supportive of people who are in recovery. Um, we do have a Facebook page. So if you would like to get involved with any of those things, um, visit the Fayette Prevention Coalition. Um, and just to get involved, send us an email, send us a Facebook message. We'll get back to you and uh, we'll hook you up with resources. So thank you guys. Thank you, Natasha. And uh, good, oh yeah. Good reminder too, Natasha, if you don't mind, put links um, and contact information in the chat box so people can find it easily. But thank you so much for the good work that you're doing here. Will do, thank you. Mm -hmm. Next up is John David. I'm John David, Southern Appalachian Labor School. I'm just going to run through a whole bunch of things going on, please. Uh, we were successful in getting the historic Oak Hill School on the National Register of Historic Places. We are working and had some progress on the Sal's Beers Fork Rail Trail. We basically are doing home repairs um, and we're in seek. We seek uh, construction materials, donated construction materials. People are calling left and right for uh, the homes to be fixed. We've just been approved to be a HUD housing counseling uh, authorized center for people who may be facing evictions and financial difficulties. We received um, close to 45,000 face coverings, which we have distributed in rural areas uh, and up hollers. 
we basically are investigating now setting up in one of our facilities something called recovery housing. We are operating the Regina Three Rivers apartment complex in Gully Bridge, which is housing uh, people who have various problems. And, uh, um, and that's a good thing. We have two food pantries going and we have uh, materials being prepared for what we call accent education, virtual after school programming services. We um, are still working on trying to get in Montgomery Appalachian construction developments, with, which, which would um, provide uh, an opportunity to construct panels for rebuilding homes, uh, Jenny Lynn houses in coal camp communities. So those are the kind of things going on right now with SALS. Uh, SALS is www.sals.info, I-N-F-O. We would love to hear suggestions and comments and appreciate support for what we're doing. And I wanna thank you all for allowing us time to talk a bit. Thank you. Thank you very much for being here and for the good work that you're doing as well. Thanks, John David. Mm -hmm. Ashton Critchley, welcome. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, ma'am, we can. Perfect. Hi everyone, so I'm Ashton. Um, I actually started a company back in June, uh, Wolverstone Enterprises, and that company in August of this year purchased Bessie's Floral Designs. Um, so most of you know Bessie's has been a staple in the Oak Hill community for almost 30 years. And uh, Barb and Bill have been at the helm of that for a very long time. And uh, they are, we're looking ready to, they were looking at retiring and um, it happened to be a great opportunity and, and serendipitous and it all just came together. So um, I took over Bessie's in August and uh, have been working on a lot of new projects and trying to work more with local businesses and the community more and looking at um, some expansion and some new ways and products that we can bring to, um, to the community and offer to the community. Uh, one of those is um, I'm hoping to, in the next year or so, actually create a um, hothouse so that we can produce our own flowers to sell at the shop. Um, and I'm hoping to be able to work with some folks in the community. Um, I've been uh, chatting with uh, Tabitha Stover and some other folks about um, how we could work together on that kind of project. So those are the kind of things that I'm looking to do um, as I take on uh, the helm of, of managing Bessie's and uh, bringing that. Um, I'm also working on some other projects um, for some other business opportunities in the community that I hope I will be able to share that good news about in the future. And I have a whole, like 20 seconds left. <laughs> what else? Um, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. It's just been uh, trying to get used to everything and getting everything assimilated and and getting things up to date. Um, you know, check out our Facebook and our Instagram page. Um, we have a new website that kind of shares a lot about what we're doing. So, but if anyone is interested in working with me on some projects, just uh, reach out to me. Awesome, Ashton. Thank you. Here we'll do. I keep forgetting about the applause. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Good luck with your new endeavor. That's exciting. Uh, let's see, Susanna, Susanna Wheeler. Hey, everybody. Great segue. Uh, Ashton, I look forward to having a conversation with you uh, in the near future. Um, I, I'm excited to see a lot of folks I know on the call. Uh, for the folks that don't know me, my name is Susanna Wheeler, and I'm the farm director at New Roots Community Farm. I'm also the president of the newly formed West Virginia Agrarian Commons. For those of you not familiar with New Roots Community Farm, uh, we're a community farm based here in Fayetteville, and we were supported um, by the Fayette County Commission and Fayette County Farmland Protection Board uh, in our development. And we've had um, a really incredible last year as we've been in pursuit of developing a robust local food economy here in Fayette County. Um, we were able to aggregate and distribute over um, 200 different farm from over 200 different farms across West Virginia and bring their products here to Fayette County to purchase. We ran a community garden that had 15 participants this year. We grew over 40,000 pounds of produce and supported the development with our market development with our partners, Turnrow Appalachian Farm Collective. Um, 
we're also feeling really excited about this being our first uh, big year and what's to come. Um, the Agrarian Commons is also a really exciting project that we're partnering, partnering on. Um, and New Roots Community Farm is going to be purchased from the county um, and put into the Agrarian Commons where it will be leased out for 99 years. And it is offering a model uh, to create long-term land tenure for farmers. And this is being recognized across the nation as um, a, a big barrier to uh, the success of the next generation of farmers. So that's a really exciting project that we have going on. And I encourage everybody to just check us out on social media. Yay, local food. Yay, Susie. I got I to gotta say, I work for the Fayette County Commission, but Susie's my boss, though. So she keeps me moving on, helping with that project, and I'm really proud of them and the work they're doing out there. Amazing. Thanks, Susie. Kathleen Tyner. Hi, all. I'm excited to be with you this evening and share some good news. Um, I'm Kathleen Tyner, and tonight I am talking about a uh, volunteer organization I'm a board member for, which is called Generation New River Gorge. We are a local chapter of a statewide organization that uh, mission is to attract and retain young people in the mountain states. Um, even though our, our mission is focused on young people, we really want to partner with everyone of all ages and, and all different interests. So um, I'll leave my contact information in the chat box. And if you want to follow up with me, please do. Um, so my good news tonight is about a recent river cleanup we did. Um, we were able to partner with three great organizations. I just want to give them a shout out. Piney Creek Watershed Association, our, our friend to the south. Uh, New River Conservancy, and the Canyon Rim Rotary Club. Uh, we were able to pull 18 volunteers out and we cleaned up uh, the section of the new from Glade Creek to Grandview Sandbar. And we, drum roll, had 43 bags of trash and 25 tires after the cleanup. So it was a really successful event and we wanna keep things like that going forward. So if you have any type of event or volunteer opportunity for folks, please get in touch with me. We'll drop our uh, Facebook and social media in the chat. Uh, we really wanna work with you and partner with you and make Fayette County a great place for everybody to live and work. Thank you. Yay, thanks Kathleen. Clean up the river. Thank you, among other things. Okay, and then last, but certainly not least, Maya Mills. All right, so my name is Maya. Um, I've grown up in West Virginia. I've lived in Fayette County my entire life. And this summer was the first summer I was able to work as a raft guide, which as most of you know, I've, was, I've, was, I've grown up on the river. And so this summer working with a whole bunch of kids what happened on the Upper New, I met so many people who said that they would never consider rafting if it wasn't for the pandemic and if it wasn't for them just wanting to get out of their house. I met people who you would never assume would go rafting. Not only that, but I was also able to get some of my friends who wouldn't consider rafting to come out with me and to experience um, the White Waddle community. And because of that, I had known multiple um, teenagers who are my age, 16, 17, who are going to train to be Upper New Guides next year. So if you guys know anyone who is around 16, 17, who wants to train to be a RAF guide, let them know that that's a possibility for them, that they can come and they can start guiding. And it helped me develop my social skills and my ability to talk and deal with people who sometimes situations aren't awesome, but it's taught me to really work through those. Another good thing is we are starting a um, U19 female rafting team that consists currently there's four of us, five of us. Um, we practice twice to three times a week and we will hopefully, if COVID permits, we'll be going out to California this summer to compete and hopefully go to the international competition. 
Wow, Maya, that's awesome. Thank you so much here. That deserves some applause. Yeah. I want to be like I, Maya when I grow up. I know, I know. I've, I've known Maya since she was six and she always has something awesome going on. <laughs> All right, let's see. We are at our breakout sessions. So for the first round of speakers, thank you so much for being here. Don't go anywhere, stick around. Second round of speakers, you'll be up in about 10 minutes. Everybody else, this is the time where Veronica is gonna randomly assign you to a breakout room. You will take turns introducing yourself and discussing the following very important and serious, no, not really, just kidding. The following uh, questions. The first one is, who is one of your community heroes? And the second question is, what is one wish that you have for our communities? So ponder that, maybe you wanna jot it down and Veronica is gonna flash you out of here and into your room in just a second. You're gonna have 10 minutes only. So speak quickly, get to know each other quickly and uh, you'll be automatically returned to Gabe and I after 10 minutes. We'll see you soon. Should be able to take yourselves. Take your
Oh, good. We have Gabe and I'm unmuted. <laughs> I'm just yickety yakking away, Gabe, to nobody or to somebody. But no. Well, I'm, I'm, on, I'm on Facebook Live right now. And it's, I think it's just me and Jeff, and maybe Jenny B. So oh, nice. OK, good. <laughs> we, didn't keep, we didn't keep everybody um, on Facebook Live waiting. Oh, good. OK, awesome. So currently, are you still on Facebook Live? Oh, that you're saying that those are the only people that are watching Facebook Live. As far as I can tell. Oh, I see, I see, I see. But won't it be something that you can go back and watch some other time? There is that. <laughs> We're totally figuring it out. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Thank you, everybody. Great. No, absolutely. Th th these are skills that we are, you know, polishing for hopefully, you know, I don't know, a few more months, yeah. right? <laughs> right. Not too much longer. Yeah. But the but you know the telecommuting thing, I I have uh, some project partners over in Morgantown that we do this every other Tuesday before all this business started, you right. know? So, and that was always useful to help keep us on the same page to make sure that our project was moving along the way we wanted it to, uh, telling them when it was important for them to come down. It just, it, you know, just really improves our efficiency. And uh, that's never a bad thing. Agreed. And so, yeah. you know, I think there's been a lot of conversations about what kind of things we want to keep from uh, from you know 2020 and what kind of things we can do away with. I'm sure there's a you know we could, the the list of things we want to get rid of for 2020 are you know we could go on ad nauseum. But the things that we want to keep, I think we have to definitely be intentional about uh, as we have that conversation. I think you know New Roots Community Farmers brought up tonight. I think we we launched that project or the online farmers market. We launched that March 9, and then we saw 160 people sign up. Um, two weeks later. I think we had about 30 people signed up, then an additional 160 signed up as of the end of March. And it happened, so all of a sudden, uh, that project became so very pertinent and important. And uh, those kind of things, right? Those, that's what we want to keep around. That's, that's what's the future of, of Fayette County and regardless of the pandemic. Agreed, Gabe, yeah. And that's actually a great question. Whenever anybody is watching this Facebook, you should put in the comments, what is something about 2020 that, that you do wanna keep around? What is something good that has come about because of the pandemic that you think we should keep? I agree with you, Gabe. Well, and I gotta give a shout out to Jenny B if she's still watching, because I think in the, the early stages of the pandemic, when I was just fuming and angry that this was, this was happening and that um, my kids couldn't be with their friends uh, for their birthday. She, you know, she helped bring me back in. You know, this is the power of our community. You know, let's talk about what is gonna, it's gonna stick and what we want to stick. And we have the opportunity to say what we want our future to look like. So shout out to Jenny B for telling the line. Yeah, Jenny B. <laughs> Thanks for watching. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, local foods, supporting local businesses, Maybe not driving to meetings that you don't have to. Sure, sure. There are some good things for sure. I think I just heard Eric say there's three minutes left. Do you have a, a community hero in your mind, Gabe? Oh, good, good question. A community hero. I mean, of course, Anita Stewart and Terry Harlan have been in the forefront of all this business, trying to help keep us, you know, safe and keep an eye on public health. And you know, again, even kind of before. Um, the pandemic and after, I think I've always thought that keeping an eye on public health as we move forward with economic and community development is something we have to do because we have so many members of our community struggling with, uh, with mental health issues uh, that maybe underpin some of the substance use disorder issues we see in our county. So, I mean, but to your question, I think our public health professionals um, before the pandemic, we were already dealing with issues in Fayette County uh, that were worse than other parts of the country. And they have been excellent leaders with the harm reduction. Uh, and now with uh, all of the testing that they've been doing, I think that those, those folks, Anita uh, and Terry and the team over there at the Fayette County Health Department, they have all been tireless advocates of some of our most vulnerable people in Fayette County. So, I, you know, so there's some of my, my heroes. Yeah, that's awesome, Gabe. Yeah, really good point. 
I can't imagine getting up every day and, and knowing what you have to face. And at the same time, I imagine that every night when they go to bed, they know that they've done really meaningful work that day. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully that's something. <laughs> yeah, good call. What about a wish that you had for our community, Gabe? Oh, man. Um, a wish. I think just to, I don't you know, of course, hoping that everyone stays healthy. Um, yeah, I think that's, that's mostly it, that we stay healthy. We're able to, you know, we have so many small businesses that are kind of the backbone of, of our community uh, that kind of help create that unique sense of place that we have in Fayetteville. In Oak Hill, Montgomery, Smithers, I think th these places are, are very much kind of underpinned by community champions. And I hope those folks are able to continue doing the work that they're doing. Um, yeah, so health of our people and also, also health of our businesses and our communities. That's a really yeah. good point. Those folks, I mean, you know, uh, we have a lot of work to do in Fayette County. Um, we have great folks doing it. I hope that they're able to take care of themselves in a way that they're able to kind of sustain the work that they're doing. Yeah, good point. Take care of yourselves, people. That's right. And <laughs> take care of each other too, if you can. <laughs> uh -huh. so, how about you, Kim? I know you only have 30 seconds left. I'll take up all the time. Talk. <laughs> I'll save it. I'm going to save it. I think everybody is coming back to us, which That's is right. awesome. All right. So the next time around, we'll go to you. Okay. And I'll do the question. Good. Yeah. Sounds good. I'm, I'm yickety yakking a bunch on this time, or I'm on mute yickety yakking, which is also, you know. That's right. Yeah. I just, I talk like this all the time, whether anybody's there to listen or not. So. <laughs> we just get a live cam on you. It'd be like the Eagle cam, you know, <laughs> the Gabe cam. What you got to say today, Gabe? What are you thinking about? <laughs> <laughs> My poor kids get to hear it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, everybody's coming back. It's so nice hanging out with you though, Gabe. Absolutely. Do this again. Yeah. Coming back, coming back. Veronica, will you let us know when we have everybody? I sure will. Folks are trickling in. We'll give them a couple more seconds here. Oh, there we go. Oh, yeah. I think that is just about everybody. Let me go back to the screen. Do my best. Maybe. We'll get that second. Nice to see everybody. Here we go. Is it shared? Thank you guys for bearing with me. This is my first time facilitating. I have a production crew at my back though. Veronica and Eric have my back. It's all good. Okay. What'd you think about the uh, breakout room? What'd you think? Let's see, I think you can go down to the bottom of your screen somewhere and there's a, I can't remember what they're called, reactions maybe, you can give a thumbs up or a thumbs down. What'd you think about the breakout room? Take a second, stick it in the chat while I figure out what I'm doing with my computer. Getting some reactions, that's good. Not too many frowny faces. Surprisingly fun, right? I'm gonna see what Catherine Maxwell had to say. She wound up in a breakout room with her mom for a second. <laughs> She's a teenager, she loves that, right? Wants to hang out with me all the time. Okay, thank you. Thank you for doing that. Thank you, I hope you, I hope you got as much out of that as, as, as we have in the past. And Gabe and I got to be our own little breakout room for a little bit, that was super fun. So um, take a second and put in the chat if you thought of someone that you'd like to give a shout out to. Um, the screen now says not all heroes wear capes. And that's a very true statement. Gabe brought up the health department, Nanita Stewart, Terry Harlan and the work that they're doing on multiple fronts right now. And still supporting things like this as best they can, even though they're in the trenches, right? They're dealing with unprecedented difficulty and they're still focusing on the good. Pretty amazing. Um, I'll take a second and share with you that one of my hometown heroes is uh, John Bennett, who works for Dave Sanitation. I bet some of you know John Bennett. He's worked for Dave Sanitation for 30 years or something, and uh, he picks up trash. That's what he does, and he does it with a smile. Every single day, you say, hey, John Bennett, how are you doing? And he says, I'm great. He always says, I'm great. And yeah, that's... Uh, 
I, I would like to be that in my world, whatever I'm doing with a smile like John Bennett. And he also gives treats to my dogs, even the really old ones. And he sometimes has to go way out of his way to make sure that they get their treat, but he does it every single week. So John Bennett is my hero. I hope that you put someone that you're thinking of in the chat box and maybe we can get some of those people on our next good news because that's part of the good news in our county, right? Okay, speaking of good news, we're moving on to our round two um, speakers. Can't wait, more good news. And we're starting with Katie Johnson. Are you ready, Katie? Soon, soon she will be ready. Katie, you should, there, if you have the option, you should have the option to unmute yourself now. Right. Have you been penned up with your kids? Does anyone feel like their brains have been sifted by the screens of the times? Well, good news. We have just the thing for you. Grab your passport, kids, and let's go. Oh, not that one. That won't get you far. You might want the passport to adventure. That's right, coming spring 2021, kids can get their own pocket-sized guidebook to fun and free Fayette County adventures that lurk right in our backyard. They'll discover flora and fauna that fluttered unnoticed while their dome was in their phone. They can take a phone boat out for a float find secret codes in our parks, solve mysteries, and even learn history as they explore the trails in public places. They might learn about banging chains at the disc golf course and precisely which berry turned the bird poop purple. The potential to learn is tremendous. Animal tracks, centipedes, constellations, geography, geology, and do we have any man-made creations? And while everyone is a winner when they step outside and can marvel at a maple, we have prizes to boot. The folks at Adventure Fayette County and the ICE Collaborative have teamed up with Vermont-based Come Alive Outside so we can share in the nationally sponsored loot. And if any of you here are intrigued by this chance to present a new perspective to our young lads and lasses, some local prizes might help them see what we all already know, that Fayette County is the place to be. It won't take a million bucks, but maybe a voucher for fruit, or maybe a ride on a bike with a guide, or a simple piece of gear that can breathe while they achieve. Well, that's my spiel. I hope you won't forget the passport to adventure. That's it. Nice. <laughs> 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 that was fun to write. <laughs> I'm ready to bang some chains. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Thank you, Katie. Thank you so much. Mayor Crickshank. Hey. Oh, that's, oh I'm oh, Yep. Okay, good. Yeah, you, Katie, I think that's a great idea. Sign us up. Um, I want to thank those in the county who have reached out, number one, and supported our family of Secret Sandwich Society. That gives a perfect example of how our communities support and take care of each other when we're hurting. So thank you all for that. Um, like others, we're taking the COVID one step at a time. Uh, we hung the mask up banners as you come into town as well as smaller ones um, so that we could have a unified look and try to get the message out to everyone that we all have to work together to get through this pandemic. Uh, I know Oak Hill has also placed the banners uh, with a chamber. I appreciate you guys sending out the same message. A couple of other things that are happening in our corner um, are the old school properties. We're utilizing one for the new police department. And right now we're using part of it for a temporary dog park as well as a temporary parking area. Uh, but this is a temporary phase, and I hope to tell you more about that later. Uh, as with other things, I think our mayor's group got derailed this year, uh, though I have hopes next year we'll all be able to work together to develop more things. I love that our, we've got murals reflecting our art in Mount Hope, Oak Hill, and Montgomery, 
that betray our history, as well as the artistic ones in Meadowbridge, Smithers, Anstead, and Fayetteville. I think we just need to continue to embrace who we are and develop that in our growth. And I think we'll be able to succeed in all things as long as we remember we've got the New River Gorge and that should be our reflection to the world. So that's it for this month. Yay, thank you, Mayor. You're doing a great job, Mayor. Keep mm -hmm. up the good work. Yep. Okay, Superintendent Watts. I'm gonna reset the timer. You're up next. Sorry about that. I was um, putting a hands up for Sharon. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Apology. Um, thank you for inviting the park and um, for all the folks that work for the Park Service. We are thrilled and have always been delighted to be a big part of Fayette County and also all of our other neighboring counties um, that are within the watershed. And this year we have been incredibly busy and six, as I said, our visitation is way up on trails and boating and hiking and climbing. Um, it's been an interesting summer, um, as we all know. Um, the staff has um, adapted to every way that we do business, um, including working with our partners. But we have great partnerships with many of you that have been on um, or that have spoken with all the community leaders. Um, in the town, but also really it's all to protect what we give away and protect for the next generation. So this year we were lucky, we got a lot of extra money. So we um, completed two really important roofing projects, one for Canyon Room Visitor Center that gets over 500,000 visitors a year. Um, we have adapted and it had, was closed while you were putting on the roof and the interp division worked outside and provided incredible visitor information for thousands of visitors, many that are new to the National Park Service, many that are new to Fayette County. Um, we found out in COVID that we had lots of new visitors to the Park Service um, across the country, but especially here, so we're, because we're so close to so many different locations. Um, we did the new roof also at the depot. So the historic building that we treasure actually has a new roof. Um, we had partnerships that did river cleanups um, with the New River Gorge National River Coalition. Um, we did river cleanups with several other people throughout the park. We also have an active uh, agreement with Active Southern West Virginia for activities. We um, are redoing the campground at the Golly, so that's something we'll ask help for next year. And most important is a water alliance cleanup. So if you can help us get involved in that, that improves the watershed for the whole generation and for future generations. So thanks for all you do. And um, we appreciate being part of this unique part of the world. Thank you, Lizzie. Next up is Aaliyah Denny. Aaliyah? Hi guys, um, my name is Aaliyah Denny and I'm a health educator. I work for New River Health. Uh, one of my favorite projects that I'm getting going is I'm starting a 4-H outdoor adventure club for students 9th through 12th grade in Fayette County. Um, I've had the help of J.R. Davis, our 4-H extension agent, and so the goal is to get kids outside doing outdoor adventures for free. So with the help of discounts from local outfitters, grant money and fundraising, um, I would like for any kid to be able to do any activity free of cost. Um, timber trek, uh, snowboarding, zip lining, rafting, kayaking, mountain biking, hiking. I also wanna get them uh, kind of giving back. And so I want to um, teach them environmental stewardship I want them to participate. I want them to participate in trash pickups, um, do some stream monitoring, some water quality testing. Um, I'm trying to connect them also with the community at large. So I'd really like to connect with um, different groups on doing trash pickups or doing certain community projects. So that way, um, you know, they're going to be adults soon in a few short years. So that way, then they can continue, you know helping giving back to the community. Uh, maybe they'll start a 4-H club of their own one day. 
So if you know any student grades nine through 12 that wants to participate, please let me know. Um, we have our first trip tomorrow, but our trips will be suspended uh, starting on Friday through January 9th due to COVID. Um, but we do practice K, uh, 4-H uh, COVID safety uh, procedures. Um, also, please check us out on Facebook, um, comment on our posts, like and share. Um, even though we can't be active um, after Friday and do actual trips, I wanna still have activities um, you know, interactive activities through our, our Facebook page and, and hopefully through Instagram. So things that the kids can still, you know, participate in virtually. Thank you, Aaliyah. That sounds totally awesome. Huge shout out to Aaliyah for doing all the uh, stream cleanups and, and litter sweeps in Fayette County also every year. Thanks so much, Aaliyah. Yes. Oh, thank you. Thanks, guys. Yeah, for the good work that you do, and then you're you're sharing it, you're spreading it. That's a that's an awesome thing. Make sure you put your contact information down there in the chat box. Okay. Okay. Thank you guys for having me. Thank you. Yes. Uh, next up is Angel. Angel Duncan. Hey. <laughs> oh, this is my first name. Yeah. yeah. Welcome. <laughs> it's a good place to start. We're friendly. Okay. I know, <laughs> right? Just in front of all these people. Um, Okay, so uh, my name is Angel Duncan, and I have been the park assistant the last two years at the Fayette County Park. Um, thank you for letting us be a part of Good News Fayette County. Um, I think it's a good time to share some good news. Um, so we have two, just two things to go over. The first thing that we um, are doing, our park um, advisory board put together a 21 question survey through SurveyMonkey um, with just some general questions such as um, it's to do with the uh, Fayette County Park and the Soldiers and Sailors Memorial Building. Um, we just wanna know how often do you guys visit these facilities? Um, what type of activities would you like to see happen um, at either location and to share some memories. Um, growing up here, I know I have a lot of memories at both places. Um, and it's just, it's the link for that is on our Facebook page under the Fayette County Park page. If you guys want to head over there and share it um, just so we can get some feedback um, and see what the community wants to take place. Um, the second thing is the Winter Wonderland Christmas Lights. Um, they take place December 1st through the 30th from 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. There is a $5 fee to get into the park per vehicle, not per person, but per vehicle. Um, and you can ride around as many times as you would like. We will have Santa Claus there, but he will be from um, at a distance. He, we're going to have him at the house, so just drive by and wave. Um, we're trying to limit social gathering. Um, we will have the uh, pool house will be open Wednesday through Sunday, starting December 2nd, I believe. Um, and we're going to have all of our concession stands there if you guys want to check that out. Um, we are taking cash, card, and check. Um, credit cards or anything, um, there is a small service fee if you use a card. And thank you. <laughs> Yay. Thanks, Angel. Those Christmas lights are going to be packed this year. That drive through is going to be, it's going to be packed. So get there early. Yeah. yeah, good point. That sounds like that's something fun to look forward to. I like just thinking about that drive through with the Christmas lights. That's awesome. Okay, Ron Crozier, you're next. Ron Crozier. Hello, uh, I'm Ron Crozier, president of, uh, are we going there? Yes, I'm Ron Crozier, president of Downey Ridge Environmental Company and uh, Crozier Sanitary Service. Uh, in 2010, we uh, patented a uh, technology we refer to as Greasilla. Greasilla recovers green energy from uh, food waste from commercial kitchens commercial kitchens, besides being in restaurants or in prisons, schools, hospitals, nursing homes, uh, more than you'd ever imagine. The fuel that we produce uh, from this food waste uh, trades as a commodity known as uh, brown grease on the Jacobson Exchange. Uh, it's a very green energy, uh, no greenhouse gases whatsoever, and it's a drop-in substitute for bunker oil, uh, the dirtiest uh, fuel that we use on earth and use to fuel uh, most of the shipping on earth. Uh, we sell this product, uh, this technology to treatment plants, waste haulers, food processors, and biodiesel processors. 
And uh, while some of the manufacturing is uh, done in other states, probably half of the manufacturing is done in West Virginia. And then we, uh, we ship this technology, not just uh, all over the country, but uh, currently we have uh, operations going in the United Arab Emirates, uh, Asia, Australia, and uh, we've been written up uh, in publications from Chemical Engineering Magazine to Food Engineering Magazine. Uh, uh, it's rather a long list. If you look at greasezella.com, we have a media section there. You can see some of the things that we're involved in, uh, particularly heavily involved in biodiesel now as uh, brown grease is a much cheaper feedstock than uh, yellow grease for biodiesel. But uh, anyway, a lot of good press for this technology that comes from uh, right here in Fayette County. You'll see us, uh, I think the Wall Street Journal is doing an article on us, so it should be out in the next month or two. Uh, and there's two minutes, so thank you. That's amazing, technology coming right out of Fayette County. That's awesome, Ron. Thank you. Uh, Randy Boyd. I'm Hi, I'm Randy Boyd, and uh, I've lived here all my life, and I've watched the tourism industry grow from like one whitewater rafting company to 20, and then mountain biking and rock climbing. And uh, um, so what I'm here to talk about is that uh, yoga tourism is a multi-billion dollar industry worldwide, and I just see it as another cog in uh, the New River Gorge in Fett County, tur Fett County's tourism industry. And over the last four or five years, we've um, held different workshops and uh, teacher trainings here in Fett County. And these people come here and stay for like a week at a time and come back another time of year and stay a week and they pay for lodging and, and food. And they end up coming back here just, wow, I didn't know if they, they white water rafted here and they come back and they white water raft and they come teachers come back and hold their own workshops and right now um I, you know i had scheduled um a, an advanced yoga teacher training that got canceled because of covid but we're doing it virtually and uh they'll come back here when covid is over and we can meet in person and then like Kelsey Reagan, who I, is, I believe is on this call, she's helping host um, a, a yoga festival here next year. So I just see it as another part of uh, the, the cog in, in the tourist wheel. And we need to keep that going. That's awesome, Randy. Thank you, that's great. Yeah, yoga in Bay County. Very nice. Thank you, Randy. I'm gonna stay. I'm gonna stay. <laughs> That's right. Uh, Janet Proctor. Gosh, I get to follow my, my yoga instructor, Randy. Thank you. <laughs> I'm, I'm here on behalf of the Fayetteville Arts Coalition. And for those who aren't familiar with the Arts Coalition, it was formed back in 2011 by a group of folks that were interested in um, creating a sustainable arts community in Fayetteville and the local area. And some of our past projects, uh, the mayor, Kirkshake already mentioned some of the murals that are in town and the Jeff Fetty sculpture that's at the corner of Old Court Street and Keller Avenue. And in the past, prior to COVID, we hosted a holiday art sampler every first weekend of December, where it was a two day marketplace for local artists to have the opportunity to present their wares in local communities shop locally. Um, we've also offered the family talent show in the spring, which we couldn't hold this past year because of COVID um, and also different painting classes and art classes. In addition, we've offered a kids summer art camp for the last three summers. And this past summer, we kind of switched our gears with our kids summer art camp and we were able to offer a art camp to go where we put together a week's worth of different art projects and families registered ahead of time and then picked up their art packets and took them home. And we had great feedback from that. So that was one way to kind of still get the kids busy, bring art into the community and work around 
our, our new life, our new normal. The other thing that's going on that I want to put out there real quickly is the first Saturday of December in conjunction with Jenna Grayson, who's kind of spearheading it, we're helping. There's going to be a winter art market at uh, Free Folk Brewery on Saturday, December 5th from 12 to 8. And there'll be artists there set up outside so people can come and shop, wear your mask, but um, should be hopefully be able to hold that outdoor art market the first Saturday of December. Okay. And from there, we'll see what else we can work in the next couple months as things change and the dynamic changes, but. <laughs> Thank you, Janet. Thank you so much for putting the spotlight on, on art in Fayette County. Janet makes the best masks, too. Oh, thank you, Gabe. <laughs> okay, Pat Strader. Yep, so I'm going to jump right in two minutes, and I'm, I'm, I'm bound and determined to prove my friend Jeff Peter wrong that I can get this done in two minutes. Um, Pat Strader, I'm with Digital Relativity. Uh, uh, very proud to be part of a team of 29 full-time creative professionals based out of Fayetteville with an office in Charleston, West Virginia as well. Um, doing the things uh, of those 29, 24 are born and raised in West Virginia, doing what we were told that we couldn't do, and that is be part of the creative economy here in West Virginia. I'm incredibly proud of the fact that we have made the Inc. 5000 list and we have made the Inc. 500 list as well. But that's not what I'm here to tell you about. I'm here to tell you about a new program that we are starting uh, that we're calling the Accelerator Program. I have been a long proponent of the fact of, of education, but I also am a self-taught marketer myself. So we believe that um, if you have the opportunities, the tools, and the training that you can do anything. And we know that those individuals exist all around us here in West Virginia and in Fayette County. And so we're going to be providing a paid internship program. It's actually going to be doing work for the small businesses here in our area. So there, there's going to be paid internships that are doing real life work to help to support the lifeblood of our communities and our state, which is small businesses. And I am incredibly proud uh, to be able to present that to you and to talk to you about that. And, and I'm really grateful for the opportunity to be a part of this and to listen to all of the incredible stuff that is happening all around us and thank you and i made it jeff i made it <laughs> nice jeff thank you can be an intern what'd you say gabe jeff jeff peter can be an intern right <laughs> he, he's our he's our team yogi yeah <laughs> That's awesome. Okay, and then last but not least, Chad Smith. What's up, neighbor? Hey, Fayette County. I'm Chad Smith. You might recognize me from Friday Morning Live Drive, the first good news of Fayette County. But uh, I'm here to talk about uh, Fayette County Youth Soccer. It just closed up my 12th year with uh, soccer in, in Fayette County and uh, started off, you know, with being on a team like I think it was called the Killer Bees to uh, finishing up with the Oak Hill High School boys soccer team and uh, this was our fifth year winning a sectional championship in a row and it was extra special this year because we were double A and we moved to triple A so that was pretty cool. I just want to recognize five players that got recognized at the regional level um, one being uh, Chase Miner who got second team Colton Workman got first team in the regional, Ty Carr, Chance Miner, and Jack Hayes. And those boys also were recognized in the All-State as well. Colton Workman got second team All-State. And um, Ty Carr, Chance Miner, and Jack Hayes got honorable mention. And that, that's huge uh, to have five players recognized there. And so we had a total of 38 uh, players on the team. And... Uh, so I've been 
extremely involved with, with soccer in Fayette County. And I think that it would be an incredible opportunity for Fayette County to like move to the next level for soccer when it comes to the indoor and maybe even having the opportunity to start getting like some turf fields in the area. So I'm going to get my hat backwards. This is my serious hat here. And I'm really going to put my brain together because I'm an entrepreneur by heart. And now I'm going to really start thinking about how to pull this off from getting some property to some investors. We drive two hours to go to Tays Valley for my son to, to do year round training in soccer. And it's something that could happen here in Fayette County. Yes, Chad. Yes. 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 So good stuff happening, opportunities abound. That's what this is all about, right? We're focusing on the bright lights that already exist here and we're talking about how we can create more. That's awesome. Thank you, Chad. Thank you. Okay, so everybody stick with us. That is the end of our speaker time, but if you wanna hang on for just a couple more minutes, we're actually asking all of our speakers to stay if you can. Uh, Veronica is going to break the speakers into, um, I think, some kind of coordinated groups, and you can have more time with them in smaller groups at the end of this. Like I said, grab a beverage if you want to um, and hang out 2020 style. So don't go anywhere just yet. We want to know uh, whose news was missing. What, what did we not talk about tonight? I, I think that we all know that this is just the tip of the iceberg. We know that there's amazing things happening in Bay County right now. Um, who else needs to be on the Good News Fayette County, the next one that we do? So if you could please put any suggestions that you have for future speakers in the chat, that would be awesome. If it's you and you want to share your contact information, you can, or you can um, contact the New River Gorge CVB with that information if you would prefer. But if you can think of someone that, you, that, that should speak and maybe what they should speak about, go ahead and put that in the chat now. And now Veronica's going to give us a poll, find out if you wanna have more good news, if this was of value to you. Um, I don't know how that works, but Veronica's gonna work her magic. There we go. Don't worry, magic has been worked. <laughs> so how do people do this, Veronica? They just have to like click on on there where they oh I see yeah something. so Good that point. poll should be popping up somewhere on your screen you'll see four different questions each multiple choice you just go through and answer however you are moved to answer and then once we uh, be sure to scroll because there are four questions there three questions there's some number of questions scroll till you're finished and then when it looks like several folks have had a chance to enter we will share those results and see what you all think What's wrong with overcooked Brussels sprouts? That's what I want to know. Wow, every two months. I like how much good news you all are anticipating. As you are filling this out, be thinking again, as Kim's mentioned, who was not here tonight or who would you like to hear from? I know sometimes in Fayette County, we see a lot of the same faces. A lot of us on here tonight know each other through work and volunteerism and other organizations. And this is for the whole community. So hopefully most of the community is checking us out on Facebook Live, but for the next good news event, whether that's in two months or six months, think about who else should be on here that is not, who haven't we heard from? Gary Moorfield. <laughs> yes, Levi, drop that name in the chat. Someone put Gary Moorfield in that chat box. Yeah. Anyone that's coming to mind, put in there. And it looks like just about everyone has voted. So this is the last call. If you want your vote in that poll, fill it out now. I'm giving you a couple more seconds and then we're going to close the poll and share the results. All right. Here we go. Mm -hmm. 
All right. Kim, you want to look over those results? Sure, it looks like, uh, was this worth your time? 66% of you says that you really enjoyed the event. That's awesome. Another 34 willing to tune in, and I'll take that. Number two, how often would it be beneficial to conduct a good news event? It looks like every two months is the winner there. Every three months is a close second. And um, what would improve the event? Oh, it looks like we have a few things going on here. Longer time for speaker presentations. Okay. A VIP keynote presentation. That's a fun idea. Refreshments. Yeah, who's going to bring those? Put your name in the chat. <laughs> and then more time in the breakouts. That's fun. I felt that way last time too. I could have chatted in our little group for a while. Oh, look, the winner really though is ability to reach through the screen. And I'm going to assume that means high five the presenters. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, presenters rocked. You guys did a great job tonight for sure. Okay, thank you, Veronica, for making that happen. That was fun. Did I get all the questions? Yes. And then, oh, Gabe is going to wrap us up. And then remember that we're going to break out one last time. If you want to stick around um, and hang out in a smaller group for a little bit longer, continue focusing on good news and good things happening in Fayette County. Gabe. Thanks, Kim. Uh, thanks again to all of our speakers. Um, I would encourage everybody who's watching, if uh, somebody mentioned something that uh, really piqued your interest, uh, reach out to them. This is, this is one of the great aspects of this Good News Fayette County is that we can connect and build on each other's momentum uh, to really bring good things to Fayette County. Uh, I saw a few names in the chat box uh, of other speakers we might want to have on there. A few of those are from Raleigh County. Kind of begs the question, should we do a Good News NRG? Uh, thing I don't know maybe once a year I don't know that's a lot but um, but that's a question for our uh, for our organizers and again thanks so much to Kim Maxwell to Jeff Eric Veronica Jordan and Becky for pulling this together and for letting me be a part of it I appreciate it uh, and if anybody has any questions for the resource coordinator's office or has uh, some thoughts or suggestions on how the resource coordinator's office could support your project please let us know uh, but with that we'll go on to the breakout sessions and uh, hear some more about what everyone's doing and connect, so. All right, everyone. So on your screen here, you see four different categories. Speakers, I hope you don't mind. We made up some categories and dumped you in there with some like-minded folks uh, based on what you shared tonight, maybe not necessarily what your entire mission uh, or organization is about. Um, so look, uh, let's go back to that chart if we could, Kim. There we go. So speakers who are still on the line, look at the name of the category you're in. In just a moment, I'm going to launch the breakout rooms and you should have the chance to choose what breakout room you want to be in. So speakers, if you could choose the one um, that coordinates with the, with the name you see on the screen there, that would be great. And for everyone who's just listening in, you can pick whatever room you want. Uh, if you see a name up there you want to follow up with, hop in their breakout room. All right. Feel free to pop your questions in the chat and we're gonna give you all 10 minutes. Feel free to stay as long as you like. <laughs> 